Welcome back to Crux Stationalis, the Roman Station Church Network. Today we head to the Roman Station Church for the Monday of Holy Week, La Basilica di Santa Presede. Instead of entering through the cloister entrance, one goes to the side of the basilica and enters from the right transept. Santa Presede is an early medieval titular church and minor basilica located just in the shadow of the Papal Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore, of which you can see at the end of this street. As we enter inside, don't forget to subscribe to Crux Stationalis and like this video. And when you're done watching, share it with your family and friends. The basilica is dedicated to the second century Saint Praxedes, who with her sister Purenciana was said to have provided comfort and care to Christians persecuted in the Roman Empire, Saint Peter the first Pope being among them. The church incorporates mosaic decoration that mark it among the oldest churches in Rome. The present basilica was commissioned by Pope Hadrian I around the year 780 to house the relics of Saints Praxedes and Pudenciana, the daughters of Saint Pudens, traditionally Saint Peter's first Christian convert in Rome. The basilica was then enlarged and decorated by Pope Paschal I in the year 822. Pope Paschal, along with Emperor Charlemagne, desired to get back to the foundations of Christianity, theologically and artistically. Paschal thus began two linked ambitious programs, the recovery of martyrs' bones from the catacombs of Rome and an almost unprecedented church building campaign. Not only does Santa Presede hold the relics of many martyrs brought here by Pope Paschal, but also this chapel of Saint Zeno houses the pillar of the scourging of Jesus Christ. Built by Pope Saint Paschal I in honor of his mother Theodora, to serve as her mausoleum, the plan of the chapel imitates a cubiculum or a small room in the catacombs. The entry for the Pope in the Liber Pontificalis describes how Pope Paschal established an indulgence of freeing a soul from purgatory for every five masses celebrated upon this altar. For this reason, the chapel was later dedicated to Santa Maria Liberatrix Nostra Penis Inferi. Holy Mary, our liberator from the pains of hell, and it is called the Hortus Paradisi, the Garden of Paradise, presumably because of the splendor of its mosaics. In addition to the church preserving the relic of the flagellation pillar of Christ, the sacristy also houses two relics of our Lord, a small piece of the seamless garment and a small portion of the crown of thorns. This relic is by legend said to have been discovered in the early 4th century by St. Helena, the mother of the Roman Emperor Constantine I, who at the age of 80 undertook a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, where she founded churches for Christian worship and rescued relics associated with the crucifixion of Jesus upon Calvary. In the apse mosaic, another commissioned by Pope Paschal I, Jesus stands at the center, flanked by Saints Peter and Paul, who present the saints Praxedes and Pudenciana to our Lord. Part of the function of the new church built by Pope Paschal was to serve as a repository for relics of martyrs from the catacombs. At the beginning of the 9th century, the government of the city of Rome had lost control of its surrounding countryside and thus the safety of pilgrims could no longer be guaranteed. As a result, the church undertook a campaign to collect the relics of martyrs being venerated and to re-enshrine them in churches within the city walls. All the catacombs except those of San Sebastiano were then abandoned and their locations forgotten. The new shrine churches usually displayed the feature of a mock catacomb under the high altar typically a semicircular confession, a sort of crypt accessed by stairs from either end of the transept. 
The confessio was either genuinely underground or was under the raised floor of the sanctuary. I would be remiss if I failed to mention the Roman archaeologist Giovanni Battista de Rossi, who lived between the years 1822 and 1894. He was a leading expert on the Christian catacombs and through his rigorous research methods was able to give scientific status to Christian archaeology and epigraphy, lifting them to the level of their classical counterparts. De Rossi's tireless work, especially under Pope Pius IX, led him to find numerous Christian cemeteries in Rome. His perseverance indeed resulted in the discovery of catacombs in Comedilla, Pretextatus, Priscilla, and overall San Calisto. His work underpins the devotion of the Collegio of the Cult of the Roman Martyrs, presently under the name of the Pontifical Academy of the Cult of the Roman Martyrs, those who have been primarily responsible for the resurgence of devotion of the Roman station churches over recent decades. Thank you for joining us at our Roman Station Church itinerary. I'll see you tomorrow.